So you're ready to share your message with the world. You've decided to. You're taking a step forward. And then the logical mind kicks in again. But wait, what? How are we going to do this? How, what's your branding? What's your message? What, when, where, how, who, blah, 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 blah. Next thing we know, we're in a whirlwind or confusion again. Unable to take a step, playing it safe, staying in hiding, and not able to express this authentic, burning message in your heart that people need to hear, that people are waiting to hear, where we're not going to let it happen. Karen Katz here, I can, period, is on a mission to make sure you share your authentic message that people need, that people are waiting to listen to. They are looking for that answer. And the way that you are able to explain it could help them make it click. So we are on a mission and we are going to make sure that that logical mind, which is coming up to help you stay safe, coming up to make sure that you take the steps safely, that you don't fail, that nothing happens to you. And we understand it, but we need to appease it to make sure that we are able to take that step because that message, that burning message is no good if it's kept inside you and nobody hears it. We need to help you take that step and take that next step and take that next step. Baby steps will get you to where you want to be so that people will hear what you have to say in your own way. So how do we appease this logical mind? Well, I love a nutritionist. Anne Louise Gittleman has this great analogy where she explains that for gut health, you need to crowd the bad bugs with good bugs. So she makes a solid case for taking probiotics. Whatever you choose for gut health is your decision. But I love the idea of applying this gut health to mental health, applying it to our mind, crowding these mental bad bugs with good bugs. What is the dose of good bugs that you are taking daily to make sure you can stay in that space of creative energy and take that next step forward? one day at a time. Today, I am going to share with you four techniques. Some people have a great morning routine and that's phenomenal because it sets our tone for the day. I have mine, I finally found one after years of trying to put something together that I am committed to and I love, that has the perfect timing for me and that really shifts my energy to tune in to a positive, creative, energetic state where I want to be sharing from. I did it this morning, can you tell? So that's great, the morning routine is phenomenal, but then how long does it last you? And then what, how long does it take you to fall into lower energies? Because we're bombarded all day with messages, email, social media, calls, bosses, partners, friends, relatives, so much going on that's able to shift our energy into a space that is not the one that we want to be in to create, craft, and share our message. So today, these four techniques are going to be helpful to apply any moment of the day so that you can come back to that space of centeredness, groundedness, connectedness to your heart and share from the space of knowing that anything is possible, that whatever you have to share in your heart, people have to hear it. So here we go. 
Number one technique is alternate breathing. We practice this in yoga. It automatically soothes the nervous system. It calms us down and it brings us to a space of creativity. It brings together the left side and the right side of the brain to cooperate. So here it goes, super simple. We are going to cover one nostril, breathe in through the other nostril for four. Hold it in for four. And then let go in the other nostril. Hold it for four. Now we're going to breathe in through the last nostril. In four. Hold it again for four. And breathe out through the first nostril. You can repeat that as many times as you need. If you do just one minute, because that's all you have time to do, you will notice a big shift in the way that you felt stressed and now you feel more relaxed. Can't wait to hear what you think about that one. Number two, grounding or earthing. A lot of people practice this and it's basically just walking outside in a safe space, barefoot, on the grass, on sand, anywhere that's safe, so that you can ground all these energies and emotions and vibrations with the earth. The same concept as plugging in an electrical equipment into a socket and having that third prong that just grounds the electricity in case anything happens, where we are, elect we are energy to vibration and all these emotions, everything that's going on, blah, 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 can be overwhelming in time. So we walk outside to be able to ground our energy. Another way of doing this, if you can't go outside, is just covering the top of your head and taking one to three minutes to close your eyes and just breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Keeping your hand on your head and seeing how that works for you. Also, if you only have the opportunity to just walk outside with shoes, it's better than not doing anything because it shifts our focus from that state of confusion or paralysis that we were in. It shifts our focus and shifts our energy into seeing beautiful things in nature, maybe birds chirping, anything that calls our attention and our focus in a different way, lets go of that grip that we had is going to be helpful to come back to that space of reconnection and grounding with your authentic message, with what you have in your heart to share with the world. Third technique. Love it. From Psycho-Cybernetics, favorite book. Connecting to that winning feeling. Whenever we go into that state of confusion, we start thinking in that logical mind, oh my God, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? How is this going to work? If you have a presentation or a speech or anything that really stirs up those emotions, those what if I fail? What if it doesn't work out? What if I look ridiculous? The idea here is connecting to the winning feeling. So I'd like you to think of three, four, five instances in your past where you really had a sense of success, that you did it, you won, you were able to do this and represent that feeling that space with a picture. It could be a souvenir. It could be if you went on a trip that you paid for yourself and you had a really good feeling about what you were able to accomplish. Maybe there's a picture. You want to plant these reminders, these triggers all around maybe your office, your home, your car, anywhere so that it triggers that winning feeling. You actively connect to that space where 
I've done it before, I could do it again. And you really want to connect with the emotions. Allow yourself to feel the emotions, the intensity of how you were able to accomplish something amazing before in your life. It doesn't have to be a huge big thing. It could be anything that triggers that winning feeling. Simple, small, it doesn't matter. In psychocybernetics, they give the example of us learning as kids to tie our own shoes. So anything works as long as you're connecting with that feeling of, yes, I could do it. I've done it before and I could do it again. Yes. The fourth technique, and now it's becoming, hi, Evelyn, and it's becoming one of my favorite techniques. It's called tapping. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Tapping or EFT. There's a lot, it's called emotional freedom technique. There's a lot about it on YouTube. My favorite teachers are Brad Yates and Margaret Lynch. Now I'm reading her book called Tapping Into Wealth. Fabulous technique if you're stressed out or overwhelmed and you want to bring your stress response down to calm or soothing, you are going to tap on your acupuncture points. So you could tap right here. They explain in detail all the acupuncture points, right here, right here. There's no wrong way to do it. And as you tap, you are going to say to yourself soothing words as if you were talking to your best friend, which is something we don't do often. So if you're doing it, for example, and you're at work and you only have a few minutes, I like to do a tapping here. Let's say something triggered a negative situation or you're scared about a speech that's coming up. Well, you're going to want to start tapping and say, even though I feel anxious right now, I'm still going to honor and accept myself completely. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Even though I am feeling stressed out right now about this thing going on, I am still going to honor and accept myself completely. Even though I would like things to be different, I am still going to honor, accept, and love myself completely. And then you could start tapping through the points as you talk or just stay in one point. But here you're going to want to say, yes, you know, this sucks. I don't like the way things are right now. I'd like for things to change. I wish they could be different. Yes, if they were different, it would be so much easier for me. I'd feel so much better if this situation were resolved. And you know what? Hard situations sometimes do help me grow. They help me expand. I don't like them, but they do help me and they've helped me in the past become the person that I am today. So, I might be able to overcome this challenge too. And it would be great if I could. I'd feel amazing. It'd be wonderful. And then I could share it with other people. And there you go. When you start saying soothing words and you're feeling calmer, then you're able to tap into that authentic space within yourself within your heart so that you can keep moving forward and taking action to create the change that you want, whatever that is. Sharing your authentic message, doing your first Facebook Live, which was the case for me, yes. Doing anything that will help you get closer to where you want to be. So there you have it, four techniques to help you throughout the day to reconnect with your heart, with your creativity, so that you can keep moving forward, taking baby steps to share your message, whatever is in your heart that is important to you with the world, because people want to hear what you have to say. 
I wish you a phenomenal rest of your day. Namaste. You will.